Today's shop talk, uh, in honor of June Pride, says how lavender became a symbol of the LGBTQ resistance. This was a bit of a wonky article. Um, I actually I, liked it. I, I'm glad did, you pulled it. Did you? It's so it, it talks about how lavender, and, and this happens with other colors or other symbols within within history, how they become associated with either certain movements or certain things. And this particularly revolves around lavender, or I would say purple. And how it got to be uh, a color associated with uh, the LGBTQ movement. They said they think in Western culture it started life um, as a color desire thanks to the lyric genius of 7th century poet Sappho, whose papyrus fragments told of her erotic predictions for younger women with violet tiaras. (laughs) You you almost need a (laughs) – do you understand that, John? Yeah, I do. I read that passage And, and and I laughed. No, it's a it, it, Tim picked this, and it's a good article because it actually goes from the 1800s, at, well, it's earlier, obviously Greek times, uh, but mostly the, it went from like the 1800s forward, the 19th century. So, um, there was a point in time where the color became very associated with um, aesthetics. I love that, you know, people who are obsessed with aesthetics, and 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 as such, it was viewed as a feminine. Not least of which is because one of its prominent users was Oscar Wilde, who frequently wrote about and reminisced about the purple hours spent with, <laughs> yeah, I love this, who whose purple hours spent with rent boys and provoked a moral scandal with the homoerotic themes in the picture of Dorian Gray. I did not under, you know, Dorian Gray is an interesting book because there are those things in there. But um, then you move ahead into the, the 20th century and you look at the 1930s. And this was the part that I was most fascinated by. I was not aware that people used to say things like, oh, they have a dash of lavender or a streak of lavender. Don't you have examples of this from other linguistic things? Like you used to say that there was a phrase that people used to use, light in the loafer, stuff like that. Or he's got a touch of mint. Yeah. Or uh, he's got a little gas in his tank or, you know, (laughs) something to that effect. But I, I laughed at this one too. I didn't realize I, there was a, there was lots of rumor always about Abraham Lincoln and some of his close uh, friendships he had with males. But they had said that, um, and here too they talk about uh, Lincoln's early friendships as containing a streak of lavender and spots soft as May violets. I think we talk differently then. I don't know if we would ever say that now, <laughs> would we? Yeah, that's true. The one thing that course, shocked we, me was this Eisenhower thing. Did you know about this? You, no, and. All right, I should take that back. I did, but I did not associate it with President Eisenhower. So this was a revelation to me. So why don't you tell us about that? So it says, during the McCarthy era, there was a state-sanctioned, there was state-sanctioned discrimination when President Eisenhower signed an executive order, they gave the number 10450, which became part of a national witch hunt to purge homosexual men and women from the federal government. It was dubbed the Lavender Scare by historian David Johnson. And it led to around 5,000 federal uh, agency employees losing their jobs based upon their sexuality. So it's funny that we're talking about this, plus what happened with the Supreme, not funny, but what happened with the Supreme Court this week. But I had no idea that that was, that was tagged to Eisenhower. I was kind of shocked because Eisenhower is one of those presidents you don't really hear too much about. And we were born just after he was president, right? So there, there was never a lot of discussion around Eisenhower, at least – there never seems to be, unless I could be wrong, that, you know, I, that the, I've heard of. You, no, you, you, the, I had an erroneous assumption about him, um, and it's based on the fact that he was a general. Not only, right. not only a general, but like leader of the command, you know, the Allied forces, the whole bit. Um, and I always think of the military as the most advanced organization in terms of inclusion and diversity. Certainly we've seen this, you know, over the last couple of decades— but uh, but of course, Eisenhower precedes a lot of the civil rights movement and a lot of different things that change the military moving forward. So once I put this all together in my head quickly in the timeline, I realized that, well, OK, maybe it's not so surprising that he signed this because he wasn't as, you know, my assumption was, oh, he comes from this really cool military. They're so uh, advanced right. and integrated. Not really, because his time period was a little different. And now the go ahead. No, and a lot of that still held on into the eighties. I, I even know when I interviewed for uh, a job with the government that uh, they they would harp on that question, particularly for security clearance. 
as to sexuality or gender and so forth. And I just remember being very uncomfortable about the whole thing and then them saying, you know, if you've ever experimented or any, anything to the effect of if, you've, if you lie to us about anything, you're going to get caught and then you're going to be in bigger trouble. And I know a lot of that has changed, supposedly. We, we hear about it. Uh, we had talked to some people from the State Department that said that certainly changed. But when you think about it, um, people that were gay or lesbian or identified as such were not welcome to work in the government, at least not no. openly. True. And um, now we have lavender as just a palette of designers or a color that's part of the palette that designers use. And um, I never really think about it too much. And in fact, you and I, <laughs> having grown up in Connecticut with the preppy handbook, I mean, who didn't have a pink shirt, right? Didn't you have to have a right. pink button down? <laughs> Get up pink. <laughs> it's not lavender, but. Um, and well, recently I, I took my mom to a, a medical appointment many months ago um, before the event hit. And I was wearing a lavender button down and gray slacks and, and a pair of like loafers or business shoes or something. And I remember the nurse looking at me and she said, you look so handsome, so put together. She's like, I wish more men were not afraid of color. <laughs> so she was calling you a dandy. Just, well, in her own <laughs> sweet way, I suppose she was. Yes, I'll have to go back and have words with her about words that. Words with her. <laughs> so you, you do, though. I was going to say, you, you, you always have had, I believe, you like purples. You do like purples. You've had some purple things over the years. I remember you wearing two events. You used to like purple and camel together. Yeah, it actually doesn't look bad on me. I think that might be why. I mean, red, eh. Navy blue, you nailed that for me years ago. You, you actually, I don't know how long ago you was. You're like, these are your colors: gray, navy blue. You had a bunch. Pink, I can get away with too, because of my skin tone. And lavender, like I just got a new shirt for the summer, like a short sleeve thing. It's check white and and purple checked shirt, and it looks great. And I never even think about it. It's just like a color that I know I look good in. But right. now we have a history to it. <laughs> Yeah, and so they, I, I, uh, so when we saw this article, I thought it was uh, was interesting because you don't think about sometimes how these colors get uh, associated with different different things, particularly with the LGBTQ community. Now they're saying you're going to see a lot of this, and you are seeing a lot of this on the runway in 2020, and they think a bit of it's an act of defiance uh, of reclaiming the color. So you'll see lavender out there, and uh, and purple, of course. Last year, I think it was orange, wasn't it? Was the color? Was that the color on the runway? Do you, do you remember? I it might have been orange, uh, but I think they still do this. There was a um, company in New York called Colorbox, and they used right. to actually pick the color. Like this, the color for nineteen ninety eight is going to be blue, and it was a certain like cerulean <laughs> blue or whatever. And then Pantone would follow suit, but did, I, I'm guessing people still do color predictions, right? For oh yeah, no, very clothing, very very much so, and for cars, and and um, they know out 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 a certain amount of time what <clears throat> what the colors are going to be. Do you have a favorite color? Blue, blue is one of my favorites, and I have to tell you, a certain shade of lavender is also one of my favorites. So <laughs> this was a good article.